address of welcome at Almora and reply. On his arrival at Almora, Swamiji received an address of welcome in Hindi from the citizens of Almora, of which the following is a translation. Great Sooled One Since the time we heard that, after gaining spiritual conquest in the West, you had started from England for your motherland, India, we were naturally desirous of having the pleasure of seeing you. By the grace of the Almighty, that auspicious moment has at last come. The saying of the great poet and the prince of Bhaktas, Tulsidasa, a person who intensely loves another is sure to find him, has been fully realized today. We have assembled here to welcome you with sincere devotion. You have highly obliged us by your kindly taking so much trouble in paying a visit to this town again. We can hardly thank you enough for your kindness. Blessed are you. Blessed, blessed is the revered Gurudev who initiated you into yoga. Blessed is the land of Bharatha where, even in this fearful Kali Yuga, there exist leaders of Aryan races like yourself. Even at an early period of life, you have by your simplicity, sincerity, character, philanthropy, severe discipline, conduct, and the preaching of knowledge, acquired that immaculate fame throughout the world of which we feel so proud. In truth, you have accomplished that difficult task which no one ever undertook in this country since the days of Sri Shankaracharya. Which of us ever dreamt that a descendant of the old Indian Aryans, by dint of tapas, would prove to the learned people of England and America the superiority of the ancient Indian religion over other creeds. Before the representatives of different religions, assembled in the world's parliament of religions held in Chicago, you so ably advocated the superiority of the ancient religion of India that their eyes were opened. In that great assembly, learned speakers defended their respective religions in their own way, but you surpassed them all. You completely established that no religion can compete with the religion of the Vedas. Not only this, but by preaching the ancient wisdom at various places in the continents aforesaid, you have attracted many learned men towards the ancient Aryan religion and philosophy. In England, too, you have planted the banner of the ancient religion, which it is impossible now to remove. Up to this time, the modern civilized nations of Europe and America were entirely ignorant of the genuine nature of our religion, but you have with our spiritual teaching opened their eyes, by which they have come to know that the ancient religion, which owing to their ignorance they used to brand as a religion of subtleties of conceited people or a mass of discourses meant for fools, is a mine of gems. Certainly, it is better to have a virtuous and accomplished son than to have hundreds of foolish ones. It is the moon that singly with its light dispels all darkness and not all the stars put together. It is only the life of a good and virtuous son like yourself that is really useful to the world. Mother India is consoled in her decayed state by the presence of pious sons like you. Many have crossed the seas and aimlessly run to and fro, but it was only through the reward of your past good karma that you have proved the greatness of our religion beyond the seas. You have made it the sole aim of your life by word, thought, and deed to impart spiritual instruction to humanity. You are always ready to give religious instruction. We have heard with great pleasure that you intend establishing a math, monastery, here, and we sincerely pray that your efforts in this direction be crowned with success. The great Shankaracharya also, after his spiritual conquest, established a math at Badrikashrama in the Himalayas for the protection of the ancient religion. Similarly, if your desire is also fulfilled, India will be greatly benefited. By the establishment of the math, we, Kumaonese, will derive special spiritual advantages and we shall not see the ancient religion gradually disappearing from our midst. From time immemorial, this part of the country has been the land of asceticism. 
The greatest of the Indian sages passed their time in piety and asceticism in this land, but that has become a thing of the past. We earnestly hope that by the establishment of the math, you will kindly make us realize it again. It was this sacred land which enjoyed the celebrity all over India of having true religion, karma, discipline and fair dealing, all of which seem to have been decaying by the efflux of time. And we hope that by your noble exertions, this land will revert to its ancient religious state. We cannot adequately express the joy we have felt at your arrival here. May you live long, enjoying perfect health, and leading a philanthropic life. May your spiritual powers be ever on the increase, so that through your endeavours the unhappy state of India may soon disappear. Two other addresses were presented, to which the Swami made the following brief reply. This is the land of dreams of our forefathers, in which was born Parvati, the mother of India. This is the holy land where every ardent soul in India wants to come at the end of its life and to close the last chapter of its mortal career. On the tops of the mountains of this blessed land, in the depths of its caves, on the banks of its rushing torrents, have been thought out the most wonderful thoughts, a little bit of which has drawn so much admiration even from foreigners, and which have been pronounced by the most competent of judges to be incomparable. This is the land which, since my very childhood, I have been dreaming of passing my life in, and as all of you are aware, I have attempted again and again to live here, and although the time was not ripe, and I had work to do, and was world outside of this holy place, Yet it is the hope of my life to end my days somewhere in this father of mountains where rishis lived, where philosophy was born. Perhaps, my friends, I shall not be able to do it in the way that I had planned before how I wish that silence, that unknownness would be given to me, yet I sincerely pray and hope, and almost believe, that my last days will be spent here, of all places on earth. Inhabitants of this holy land, Accept my gratitude for the kind praise that has fallen from you for my little work in the West. But at the same time, my mind does not want to speak of that, either in the East or in the West. As peak after peak of this father of mountains began to appear before my sight, all the propensities to work, that ferment that had been going on in my brain for years, seemed to quiet down, and instead of talking about what had been done and what was going to be done, the mind reverted to that one eternal theme which the Himalayas always teach us, that one theme which is reverberating in the very atmosphere of the place, the one theme the murmur of which I hear even now in the rushing. Whirlpools of its reverse renunciation. Everything in this life is fraught with fear. It is renunciation alone that makes one fearless. Yes, this is the land of renunciation. The time will not permit me, and the circumstances are not fitting to speak to you fully. I shall have to conclude, therefore, by pointing out to you that the Himalayas stand for that renunciation, and the grand lesson we shall ever teach to humanity will be renunciation. As our forefathers used to be attracted towards it in the latter days of their lives, so strong souls from all quarters of this earth, in time to come, will be attracted to this father of mountains, when all this fight between sects and all those differences in dogmas will not be remembered any more, and quarrels between your religion and my religion will have vanished altogether, when mankind will understand that there is but one eternal religion, and that is the perception of the divine. Within, and the rest is mere froth. Such ardent souls will come here knowing that the world is but vanity of vanities, knowing that everything is useless except the worship of the Lord and the Lord alone. Friends, you have been very kind to allude to an idea of mine, which is to start a center in the Himalayas, and perhaps I have sufficiently explained why it should be so. Why, above all others, 
this is the spot which I want to select as one of the great centers to teach this universal religion. These mountains are associated with the best memories of our race. If these Himalayas are taken away from the history of religious India, there will be very little left behind. Here, therefore, must be one of those centers, not merely of activity, but more of calmness, of meditation, and of peace, and I hope some day to realize it. I hope also to meet you at other times and have better opportunities of talking to you. For the present, let me thank you again for all the kindness that has been shown to me and let me take it as not only kindness shown to me in person, but as to one who represents our religion. May it never leave our hearts. May we always remain as pure as we are at the present moment and as enthusiastic for spirituality as we are just now.